Hey, so I thought we'd talk about personality stuff, which, you know, I'm sure you can go anywhere and it's all over YouTube and everywhere. But um, I don't want to talk about an update on my stuff right now. I'm too frustrated. <laughs> And this is more recent and it's kind of hilarious to me, but um, so my personality type is I is an ice cream, N is a Nancy, T is in Tom, J is in James, so INTJ. And it's based off of Myers-Briggs or the 16 personality, you know, dot com. Those are free. You could take it for free. It's really easy. And then the other part of my personality type is Enneagram type 5 and you can also find sites like similarminds.com and take the test there you could take both together to me it's good to have them both because it's like peanut butter and jelly you got both sides together which goes okay this is why i'm like this you know so it kind of gives you some insights about yourself and insights about how you are around others some strengths some weaknesses things like that so i think it's always good um but um so I'm a member, I've been a member since 2011 of a site called personalitycafe.com and or Perk is also another name for it. But um, you have your own, th you know, your own pages. So INTJ has their own dedicated area. And this girl post on there, she wrote, why are you like this? I laugh so hard at that. Just the question, why are you like this? You know, you could tell that an INTJ personality type like pissed her off or confused her or something you know and so she was frustrated and that's what she said <laughs> you know why are you like this and so it's like you know that's a really general question I mean we could go into depth and ask a ton of questions and give you more information than you want to know you know so that's a loaded question but we're not all cookie cutters you know we are we're all different so what I can speak of is some patterns that I've noticed to make us the way we are so introverts in general especially intuitive introverts have a thing in common which is neglect quite often introverts grew up as children um, they had to depend on themselves so they had to nurture themselves they had to play by themselves and um, quite often various backgrounds so it could be they were you know part of a big family and kind of just shuffled around part of a small family and only child I mean it really doesn't matter they could have come from a one-parent household a two-parent household what what the he the key thing is that I've figured out is if that parent that is the parent over that child if they're not emotionally able to nurture that child or they're too busy or they just don't have the skills or whatever um, or they're dysfunctional or maybe they're toxic or they're mentally ill an addict whatever I mean I could go on and on with the list of why that parent could have neglected that child could be they were working too busy too many kids um, or again just emotionally immature just to, don't have the skills whatever there's a lot of things that go into the possibilities of that parent but the commonality is they did not nurture that child the child had to learn to nurture themselves and they you know played by themselves they did things by themselves they read books by themselves different things alone so um, that is a commonality with introverts is the neglect part um, the intuitiveness versus is someone that's a sensor or ISTJ for example or ESTJ for example so S stands for sensor versus us that are or me that's intuitive so a sensor they are more practical they're about what do I see in front of me they are the here and now type of people um, they're okay with cutting corners, telling a little white lie. Um, they're more easily like, like for example, I had a coworker who was an IS, ISTJ. No, she was an ISFJ. She was an ISFJ, and she could figure out somebody almost as quickly as me, and she would point it out and say it out loud. 
And then she would go and sit next to that person and have lunch with them. And I was just like, wow. So you could figure out that they're manipulative and a total, you know, D-bag. But then you'll go and sit next to them like they're your best friend <laughs> and chat and do small talk. I don't, I don't understand that. So, um, sensors are really all about small talk. They love small talk. They're all about going to a bar and watching a game and being loud and, you know, they're the ones that, that love the small talk, the water cooler people, you know, office gossip type of people. Um, not to say that intuitives don't do that too. I've seen some intuitives that get just as involved in the toxic behaviors, um, and and stuff it really depends on the person and i think with intuitives the motive would be they're insecure and jealous versus just shallow <laughs> a sensor sometimes they're just shallow and they don't mean to be the way they are um sometimes they do mean to be the way they are but a lot of times they're just not aware <laughs> but um so it's kind of funny to to observe um, but the good thing about learning about personality types is when you're able to figure out other people you can get along with them better and um, understand them and understand how you'll fit in with them and it's just good it's good to figure out your personality type and know your weaknesses your strengths and you know things to do to get along with people basically um, so intuitive um, or so going back to introverts so introverts um it doesn't mean they have to live alone like i've mentioned many times i've been single for many years i haven't dated in quite a few years things like that it's not that i hate people <laughs> i guess sometimes i could come off as hating people but i don't hate people i actually like them sometimes i do hate people <laughs> so i guess i'm backtracking here but um so the thing is, is um, it doesn't mean we can't live with somebody or be in a relationship or, you know, any of that. We, we do like to be around people. We do like to be in relationships and things like that. We do like to be, um, we like to live with people. It's, it's none of those things means, you know, that, that you, you're not going to stand a chance with an introvert. You can still date an introvert. It's just... Um, so say that you're doing a lot of errands and you have just used up so much gas. Well, what do you have to do? You have to go refill it. So that's the same as an introvert. If we're around a bunch of people, it feels like doing a lot of tasks. It feels like doing a lot of errands. We're just drained. And so after that, we have to go home, be alone and refill and replenish and that's how we get our energy back. We don't get it from being around people. Extroverts, they love people. They love being the center of attention. They draw their energy from being around people and being at parties and being at, you know, things where there's a get together and a lot of people. They love being in their little bicycle club and, you know, their, you know, whatever kind of clubs they're into, their running club and they'll run together and, they love their clicks and all that and introverted people especially my type we're not into any of that <laughs> um i do not like small talk i i try to do it a little bit but my um i would say i can stand to do small talk for maybe um a few minutes and then i'm drained i just i can't do small talk for every single day like hours on end like I see um, sensors do when I see sensors just talking about nothing I just am like wow I get exhausted watching it <laughs> just, it's interesting observing them but it's also exhausting because I'm like I hope they don't try to pull me into that and usually they can tell I'm not into it you know I'll say a little bit to them to be friendly and play the game but I think they can pick up on that I'm not like that and I'm different so that's why I usually get told is I'm different so um, they usually can pick up on that <laughs> pretty quickly um, but so intuitive people versus sensors so sensors see what's in front of them they don't see the big picture or think about the big picture they only are practical you know they actually are pretty good at money too they're really good at with money money management money investments they're they're some of them are giving 
Um, it really depends on the type, but um, sensors are, you know, they can be a good friend to have um, if you know any. But um, they're practical and think about the here and now. Intuitive people, we think about the big picture, we think about um, the future, we do think about the here and now and the, and the past, but we most definitely think about the future a lot. Like, for example, dating. Like, if I'm dating a guy, I immediately think about, oh, is this guy going to work out? You know, how is he going to look in the big picture with me? Is he going to be, um, you know, dependent on me to pay the bills and be a loser? Like a lot of the guys I've dated, unfortunately, or is he going to be financially independent? And um, is he going to be fun to be around? Is he going to be, make, you know, able to make me laugh and be a strength to me and be my my peanut butter to me as a jelly? Or is he just going to be, you know, clashing? You know, is he going to be, um, you know, I'm going to be blunt. Is he going to be great in the sack or is he going to suck? You know, we I can tell all that. I can tell that pretty much pretty quickly about a guy if I'm around him physically face to face I can tell if a guy likes me sometimes if I'm not in my head thinking about a lot and worried about a lot and preoccupied with a lot of anxiety and stuff that's going on I can tell if a guy likes me um, especially if they're overt you know and and do things that says that they like me and interested physically sexually but, um, so yeah, so we're able to pick up on stuff. I can pick up on if a person's been abused as soon as they walk in a room. I can usually figure out if a person has been abused in specific ways just by their movements and things like that. So I'm very observant and very able to pick up on stuff that um, sensors will be like, why do you think that? What makes you think that? Why did you say that? You know, so they can't figure things out like that. But if I was to tell this to another intuitive type and they would look back at that person, they'd go, oh, okay, yeah, I see that. And I don't have to explain. They'll be like, yep, I, I can see why you said that. And, um, yep, I agree about that person. You know, um, that's pretty obvious versus the censors, which are, the censors are actually the majority of people, the population versus intuitive types. Intuitive actually are the smaller percentage in the population. So it doesn't matter if you're an INTJ like me or ENFJ or ENFP, if you are intuitive, you're gonna be misunderstood. You're not gonna be, you know, you're gonna be in the smaller percentage of the population. Sensors have the bigger population. So, um, a lot of times you are going to be misunderstood and so that that person that posted that question why are you like this <laughs> um you know i don't know what her personality type was i just found it funny i laughed so hard <laughs> when i read that when i saw that i was just like oh man another another um <laughs> person pissed off at intj or confused by us whatever but um it just, uh, it was, it was funny, but, um, that's kind of in a nutshell, um, the best I can do with explaining the differences with an uh, intuitive person versus a sensor, an introvert versus an extrovert. So it, again, it doesn't mean if you're an introvert, you can't do stuff. Um, I can, I would go out with my extroverted ex-boyfriends to stuff. You know, especially if it was to support him. So, like, if he wanted me to go to somewhere with him to support him, I, I had no qualms with it. I would go with him in a heartbeat, you know, and um, had no problem with it. If he wanted me to, and I could pick up on how much he wanted me to be involved. So, um, for example, he had a friend that um, had cancer. And the guy was young, and he had served in Iraq and everything, and it was really hard on him. He didn't go to Iraq, my ex-boyfriend didn't. He served as a captain and trained people in the states, stateside, and then he had his medical accident and then he was medically discharged. So he, um, he knew people from, you know, basically working with them and training them and um, West Point and stuff like that. This guy, um, so he was sick with cancer and I kept telling him you need to go see him because the guy kept calling him and stuff. I said, 
you need to see him before you regret it. I, coming from somebody who lost somebody very quickly from cancer, I said, if you don't see him now, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. You were close friends. You should go see him. And finally, he said, all right, drive me up there. And so we hopped in my car, and I, I put it in my phone and my GPS, and we were gone. And we said very little on the car ride. I could sense he didn't want to talk because he was thinking and he was probably thinking about what he was going to say to his friend and thinking about how he was going to feel and things like that. So I left him alone in his thoughts and just, you know, every now and then we'll look at him to check in to see what was going on with his face and his expressions and his body language. And so then we got there and um, his, you know, I could tell when he um, got out of the car that he didn't want me to come out with him. So I stayed in the car and I watched him go and knock on the house, on the door of the house. And he went inside and I, I was fine with staying outside in my car. I, I knew he wanted me to drive him because he was too anxious to drive himself and I wanted to be a support. But I didn't want to burden him and be in the way because that was his time with his friend and it wasn't about me. It wasn't about me getting attention. It wasn't about me going, hey, what about me? You're leaving me in the car. You know, I'm not the type of person. So when he got out and he didn't come around to like, you know, look at me as if, you know, are you coming to or give me any kind of body language or, you know, look in the eyes of he wanted me to come. I knew he didn't want me to come. So I stayed in the car. I waited for him. He was probably in there maybe 30 minutes. And then he came out and, um, you know, he was emotional and um, he thanked me for taking him and for being there for him. And so I think that is more important to do for somebody than anything. So I, I am perfectly okay with being a support. I don't have to be um, at home enjoying myself all the time. <laughs> And so, um, and I do like getting out. I like going to see movies, my geeky movies, my horror movies, my my Superman, my Mar Marvel movies, my DC movies, whatever. I like getting out and seeing movies. I like um, going out to eat and trying different stuff. I, you know, I love Greek food. I love going to the Greek festivals. Greek people are just fascinating to me. I love watching them dance. I'm so jealous. I wish I had Greek you know, in my ancestry, I don't at all, <laughs> but I think it's fascinating. Their culture is so cool. So I love going to the Greek festivals they have in Dallas. It's really fun to me. And I love going to the comic cons. I'm, I'm a huge nerd. I used to dress up and my, my Instagram has pictures of me in my silly TARDIS dress and stuff like that. But, um, I got to the point I just wore t-shirts, like a theme t-shirt and jeans and I was cool with that. That was enough for me. <laughs> but I do like to experience it and meet some celebs and stuff like that. And I've had really great experiences with celebs and, and things. So um, I and and sometimes if someone's with me and they see the way a celebrity is reacting and that I'm getting attention um, or even someone behind me in line, if they see I'm getting attention and they don't get that same attention or the person before me, they get so mad. <laughs> but um, I, I think that's where I, um, you know, it's, it's great to be an intuitive type because I can read somebody and I can tell if somebody just needs a laugh or if they need to be heard or, you know, if they're just bored and they, they don't want to hear the same thing a million times, like so-and-so was better in that role or you should try this role. They've heard that stuff a million times. So I always try to say something, you know, different to make them laugh or, um, you know, flirt or whatever. And so it's been fun. So I've, I've had some good times, um, at Comic-Con. I've only had one bad experience with one celeb. He was just, um, I could tell that he is like trying to not be an alcoholic anymore. And, um, I, what was his name? Dylan McDermott, I think is his name. Is that his name? Anyway, he's he's been in stuff that I don't watch, so I didn't really know who he was anyway. So that's probably another reason why it was probably a bad idea for me to go pay and meet him. 
But, um, so yeah, I, I didn't even watch any of his stuff. I think he was in one, maybe one movie, a horror movie. And the rest of the stuff has been like stuff I don't care about, like CSI or something. I don't know what he's been in, to tell you the truth. So that's my bad. <laughs> I need to stick with the people that are in the genres that I like because I usually click with those people because they're cool. Like, like people that have been in horror movies tend to be sweethearts. They're so sweet and usually fun and funny and quirky. And, um, same with people that have been in different roles that are um, different, like Val Kilmer. Oh my goodness. I loved meeting him. Oh my God. He's just a doll. I love Val. I love him. But um, I can go on and make another video about what celebs I've met um, that are fascinating and how they reacted, but I think I won't. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, I guess that's it. So that in a nutshell is about personality types. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the thread and I will respond. Um, sometimes I'm kind of, um, you know, this is a bad side about INTJs. I'm very observant. But sometimes I miss the details, so I'll forget to check my comments, and I won't look, and then I'll see it like a year later. <laughs> Someone posted a comment, like, um, I didn't notice, like, I posted like a really brief thing about, you know, with rain, and someone commented, this. if this would have been longer, it would have been better, and I was like, oh, you know, my bad. I saw this like a year later, and I was like, oops. I guess I should, you know, respond to this and say sorry or, you know, next time I try to, you know, make a video, I'll make it longer and things like that. But um, <laughs> anyway, sometimes we miss the details, you know, um, and it's not because um, we mean to. It's not purposeful. Sometimes it is because I, I think the details are boring and tedious, but sometimes it's just because as smart as I am, sometimes I could be an airhead. <laughs> And just clueless so anyway um, thanks for taking the time to watch my video about personality types and I have a lot of other videos so feel free to watch those about personality types and um, thank you have a great day peace out